गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू दिस ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ द कोर्स कंप्रेसिबल फ्लो एंड गैस डायनेमिक्स इन आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव स्टार्टेड आवर डिस्कशन ऑन द प्रेंटल मेयर एक्सपेंशन वेव सो लेट्स नाउ ट्राई टू सी इट इन डिटेल सो वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट प्रेंटल मेयर एक्सपेंशन वेव्स सो वी डिस्कस दैट इफ वी हैव प्रेजेंस ऑफ अ कन्वेक्स कॉर्नर सो वी विल बी हैविंग सिचुएशन समथिंग लाइक दिस ओके सो इन दिस टाइप ऑफ सिचुएशन वी फाइंड दैट इफ आई हैव अ फ्लो स्ट्रीम लाइन विच इज सफिशियंटली अवे फ्रॉम द सर्फेस दैट विल बी हैविंग स्मूथ ट्रांजिशन टूवर्ड्स द new flow direction so for example earlier it was parallel to x direction now this has deflected say through some angle theta okay so now the transition of this streamline uh, at this particular location is nothing but smooth however we will be having changes in the property so that's why uh, before this uh, uh, corner convex corner i can say that say my state properties are designated by uh, point 1 so after this these are designated by state point 2 okay so this reason for uh, change is nothing but the presence of some waves over here and these waves because these are leading to smooth transition over here so these will be nothing but the mac waves or i can call these as expansion wave okay so here i will be having the series of expansion waves because what is happening flow is ultimately going to new location okay new angle so starting the point at which the change in the flow direction has started so from that point itself we will be finding that we are having one expansion wave and then i have infinite number of expansion waves which are actually finally leading to the complete deflection of the flow so this first expansion wave is also called as forward expansion wave and the last expansion wave is called as over here rearward expansion wave okay and the spectrum of these number of expansion waves is something which is called as expansion fan and we are seeing over here that all these waves are nothing but cornering at this point so these particular waves are also known as cornered expansion waves and these are initially studied by uh, prentel and mayer so this is the reason these are also known as prentel mayer expansion waves okay so uh, the reason for cornering is that because whatever the streamline which is just passing through the immediate vicinity that is experiencing a sudden change in flow property so at this point we should have nothing but slightly more strength which can lead to discontinuous uh, uh, change in the flow properties so that is the reason that when these infinite number of waves are actually coalescing at this corner point these are increasing the overall strength at this point however if you move away from the uh, wall then waves are actually continuously uh, diverging so these will not meet at any point of time and we will have smooth transition in the flow stream line okay so now uh, if we see this particular region is having some special characteristics and if you see in many ways you will be finding the behavior of this prentel mayer expansion waves is opposite to that of the shock waves so let's try to see what are the things which are different over here so first point is that we have seen that if i have a supersonic situation over here then in the downstream always i will be having nothing but a subsonic situation okay but in case of prentel mayer expansion waves if i have m1 as mach number over here and m2 as mach number over here so expansion always results in acceleration of the flow so i will be finding that my m2 will be greater than m1 okay so that is one important point that the expansion waves are having uh, on the downstream of the expansion waves i will be having higher mach number in comparison to upstream point number 2 is that 
point number two is that uh, if I talk about other properties such as ratio of P2 by P1, rho 2 by rho 1 or T2 by T1. So, these will be less than 1. So, if we see in case of shock waves what happens on the downstream of the shock wave we find that density, temperature and pressure of the fluid medium actually increases. On the other hand in case of expansion waves these all properties nothing but decreases. Then point number 3 is that whenever I have the presence of an expansion fan forward wave will be having angle mu 1 and this final wave will be having angle mu 2. So, I can say over here that mu 1 will be nothing but sin inverse 1 by m 1. So, these expansion waves not, are nothing but the weak Mach waves. Okay. So, uh, this is the reason that whatever the forward expansion wave I will be having that will be having uh, angle as sin inverse 1 by m and once flow has completely deflected and we have reached to the new uh, situation. So, last Mach wave which we will be having or last expansion wave which we will be having in rearward direction that will be having angle mu 2 as nothing but sin inverse 1 by m 2. So, here uh, with reference to horizontal direction whatever this first angle is there that is our mu 1 angle and with reference to this deflected direction whatever this angle is there that is nothing but our mu 2 angle. Okay? So, now uh, another point is there. So, this is about uh, uh, the expansion fan that the spectrum is consisting of nothing but uh, um, mu 1 and mu 2 angles. Next point is that across the expansion fan we will be having nothing but the smooth transition of properties. So, we, we are having smooth transition and in other sense I can say I have nothing but continuous variation of the properties. Okay. So, there is no presence of discontinuity over here. Okay. Another important point is that, so discontinuity is not present over here. Uh, another important point is here that if you see all these expansion waves are nothing but series of Mach waves. Okay? So, this, these are nothing but series of Mach waves. So, we know that a Mach wave is nothing but a wave of infinitesimally small strength. If this is of very very small strength, so I can consider that Mach wave will lead to infinitesimally small change in the properties. Okay. And ultimately across the spectrum of this wave, I will be having presence of almost no gradients. Okay. So, as I do not have the presence of any gradients, this will make my situation as reversible and I am not adding any heat or removing any heat across each of these waves. So, I am having adiabatic situation also. Okay. So, this reversible adiabatic situation nothing but makes phenomenon as isentropic. So, you can see that when flow passes through each expansion wave, I will be having ds equal to 0 for each expansion wave and I such that I have nothing but the series of expansion waves. Okay. So, it means that uh, the flow through expansion fan is nothing but a isentropic process. So, this is one uh, major difference to that of the shock waves. So, we see that in case of shock waves there is the presence of very large gradients and due, due to these large gradients uh, we will be finding entropy of the fluid medium increases. Okay, which ultimately leads to decrease in stagnation pressure. Okay. But over here, uh, what is happening actually because uh, expansion wave is nothing but a, a very weak Mach wave. Okay. So, it is a, a wave of weak strength which is also known as Mach wave and within the Mach wave we do not have the presence of any irreversibilities. So, it means process is reversible and we are also not adding any heat or removing any heat. So, that is why this process is isentropic which is the major uh, difference from that of a shock wave process. 
okay so now uh, let's try to analyze this particular flow situation so what i will do i will consider first say this is my velocity v okay and when the flow has passed through first mach wave okay so say only a single mach wave it has deflected through a very small angle of d theta because when we are having a mach wave its strength is small so deflection of the flow will also be very very small okay so say flow has deflected through angle d theta and during this deflection of the flow what has happened if earlier flow velocity was v new flow velocity has become v plus dv is this one clear okay so when if i study the flow through a single expansion wave okay so single expansion wave say having angle mu over here so this is my nothing but a single mach wave or expansion wave which is having angle mu over here because it is of very weak strength so what will be happening this will lead to very small deflection in the flow so very small deflection in the flow is d theta and it will also lead to very small increase in the flow velocity so that flow increase is actually v plus dv okay now let me consider that let me consider that i have a perpendicular line from this direction v okay from this v i am putting a perpendicular on this wave okay and in this process also what i will do i will shift this v vector from this position to this position okay so if i shift this v vector so this whatever dashed line i am representing with uh, red arrow that will be becoming nothing but my v vector v over here okay so this i have shifted from this location to this location now I, as i told you that this particular angle i have taken over here as nothing but 90 degrees so this angle is mu so for this triangle i can say this angle will become pi by 2 minus mu okay and this angle over here is complete 180 degree so i can say that this angle over here will be becoming nothing but pi minus pi by 2 minus mu so it will be becoming pi by 2 plus mu over here okay and now if you see this angle is d theta this angle is pi by 2 plus mu so ultimately this angle will become pi by 2 minus mu minus d theta is this one clear <coughs> now let me consider the law of sines particularly for this bottom triangle so if i consider for this bottom triangle then i can say that ratio of v plus dv by v will be equal to nothing but the sine of angles opposite to these uh, branches okay so one branch is this v plus dv so opposite to this angle is pi by 2 plus mu so this i can write sine of pi by 2 plus mu divided by this is v so opposite to this i have angle sine of pi by 2 minus mu minus d theta okay now let's consider this pi by 2 minus mu as nothing but a and this as b okay so if i do so i can write v plus dv by v equal to sin pi by 2 plus mu will be sin of 90 plus theta is nothing but cos theta okay so this will be cos mu then here what is the formula for sin a minus sin b what is the formula for this sin of a that is pi by 2 minus mu into cos of b 
माइनस कॉस ऑफ ए इंटू साइन बी इज दिस पॉइंट क्लियर सो नाउ वट आई विल गेट फ्रॉम हियर दिस इज कॉस म्यू वट इज साइन पाई बाय टू माइनस म्यू कॉस म्यू कॉस डी थीटा माइनस साइन म्यू साइन डी थीटा ओके नाउ इफ यू सी माय डी थीटा इज वेरी वेरी स्मॉल इफ डी थीटा इज वेरी वेरी स्मॉल कॉस ऑफ डी थीटा विल बी अप्रोचिंग टू वन एंड साइन ऑफ डी थीटा विल बी अप्रोचिंग टू डी थीटा ओके सो लेट्स सब्स्टिट्यूट दिस ओवर हेयर वट आई विल गेट वी प्लस डी वी बाई वी लेट मी राइट वन प्लस डी वी बाई वी वन प्लस डी वी बाई वी इक्वल टू कॉस म्यू डिवाइडेड बाय कॉस म्यू माइनस डी थीटा इंटू साइन म्यू एंड इफ यू टेक दिस कॉस म्यू इफ यू डिवाइड थ्रू आउट बाय कॉस म्यू द न्यूमिनेटर एंड डिनोमिनेटर ऑन राइट हैंड साइड यू विल गेट वन माइनस डी थीटा इंटू टेन म्यू ओके नाउ फ्रॉम द सीरीज सोल्यूशन वी नो दैट इफ आई हैव एनी क्वांटिटी वन बाय वन माइनस एक्स फ्रॉम द सीरीज सोल्यूशन आई कैन राइट इट वन प्लस एक्स प्लस एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस एक्स क्यूब प्लस सो वन अपू लाइक दिस ओके सो लेट मी अप्लाई दिस ऑन माई टर्म वन माई वन बाय वन माइनस डी थीटा टेन म्यू सो इफ आई डू सो वॉट आई विल गेट वन प्लस डी वी बाय वी विल बी इक्वल टू वन प्लस डी थीटा टेन म्यू प्लस डी थीटा स्क्वायर टेन स्क्वायर म्यू प्लस सो वन अपू ओके now we have considered that our d theta is small so for small value of d theta d theta square will be zero okay so it will be negligible so i can say that my dv by v over here is nothing but d theta times tan of mu okay now let me write d theta times tan of mu let me write as nothing but sin mu by cos mu only okay and what i can write in place of mu i can write sin inverse 1 by l okay because mu is nothing but angle corresponding to the mac wave and that is equal to 1 by sin inverse 1 by m divided by in place of cos mu first i can write square root of 1 minus sin square mu so this will become db by v equal to d theta times mu sorry d theta times 1 by m divided by 1 minus sin square mu so here also mu i can replace with sin inverse 1 by m so it will become nothing but square root of 1 minus 1 by m square okay so ultimately i will get d theta divided by square root of m square minus 1 because in the denominator whatever m will be coming that will be cancelling out okay so i can say from here that d theta is nothing but equal to m square minus 1 square root dv by v this is one important relation which is known as governing equation for prentel mayer expansion waves okay and this is also known as 
differential form of Prentel-Mayer equation. So, the name of the equation is also itself Prentel-Mayer equation. Fine. Now, so what we have done basically, whenever we have started, we have considered only the presence of a single expansion wave. And likewise, if you see, we have nothing but series of expansion waves. So, you can see that a one expansion wave is resulting to dv change in velocity. So, that way if you say if you are having infinite number of expansion waves in this region, so if each is resulting change dv1, dv2, dv3, the summation of entire change will become a finite change. Okay, Though process is remaining isentropic only, but then also we are having changes in the flow properties. Okay, So, till now whatever we are trying to do is actually we are trying to achieve this for a single wave. Okay, Now, if you have to see that how much change is happening over the finite angle, change in the Mach number for the finite angle. So, for that first I have to present this dv by v term in terms of our Mach number and after that we have to actually perform the integration between the limits of integration. Okay, So, to do so, uh, we know that velocity is nothing but Mach number into speed of sound. If I take log of n, uh, log of v, so it will be becoming log of m plus log of a. So, from here, now if I take differential, it will become dv by 1 by v into dv. So, dv by v equal to dm by m plus dA by a. Okay. So, this is what I get from here. Now, I also know that I also know that I can write for a calorically perfect gas. So, till now if you see this particular equation is valid for every type of fluid because we have not introduced the assumption over here. So, now I am trying to find out the dv by v in terms of Mach number and while I am doing so to find out this term dA by A, I will now introduce the assumption of calorically perfect gas. Okay. So, for a calorically perfect gas, I can say that A naught by A will be equal to what is A? Gamma RT. So, gamma into R will be constant for a calorically perfect gas. So, it will be equal to T naught by T square root or I can say ultimately A naught by A square is nothing but T naught by T. And T naught by T we know that it is nothing but equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square. Okay. So, from here I can say that A will be equal to A naught times 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square power minus 1 by 2. Is this one clear? So, now if I take ln of A that will become ln of A naught minus 1 by 2 ln of 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square. Okay. Now, let me take the derivative of this. So, dA by A will be equal to A naught will be a constant quantity. So, it will be 0. Then I will be having minus 1 by 2 and d of this. So, d of this will be gamma minus 1 by 2 into 2m dm okay d of this quantity divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square so let me cancel 1 2 so say this 2 is cancelling with this 2 so ultimately i am getting minus 1 by 2 gamma minus 1 m dm divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square. So, let me name this as equation number 2. So, what I will do now, I will substitute equation 2 in equation 1 and my equation 1 was db by v equal to dm by m plus dA by A. So, in place of that, I will get minus gamma minus 1 by 2 
एम डी एम डिवाइडेड बाय वन प्लस गामा माइनस वन बाय टू एम स्क्वायर ओके सो लेट्स सिंप्लीफाई इट एंड लेट्स राइट दैट डी बी बाय वी इक्वल टू डी एम बाय एम आई हैव टेकन कॉमन सो इन साइड आई विल बी गेटिंग वन प्लस गामा माइनस वन बाय टू एम स्क्वायर बिकॉज इफ आई टेक डी एम बाय एम कॉमन हेयर आई विल बी हैविंग वन दैट विल बी मल्टीप्लाइड विद दिस क्वांटिटी सो वन प्लस गामा माइनस वन बाय टू एम स्क्वायर माइनस ऑफ इफ यू सी डी एम इट इज दिस टर्म इज हैविंग वन डी एम बट आई एम टेकिंग कॉमन डी एम बाय एम सो इट हैज टू मल्टीप्लाई विद वन एम ओवर हेयर सो इट विल बी बिकमिंग माइनस ऑफ गामा माइनस वन बाय टू एम स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय वन प्लस ओके सो फ्रॉम हियर आई विल गेट दैट डी वी बाय वी इज नथिंग बट इक्वल टू दिस विल गेट कैंसल ओके सो इट विल बिकम वन प्लस गामा माइनस वन बाय टू एम स्क्वायर होल पावर माइनस वन इन टू डी एम बाय okay so ultimately i have obtained the value of dv by v in terms of dm by m but uh, understand this that whatever the earlier form of prentel meier e equation we are having that is a generic equation applicable for all fluids when i will be doing this substitution dv by v in terms of dm by m this is applicable nothing but for a calorically perfect gas so whatever analysis now i will be doing that will be specific to a calorically perfect gas okay so uh, my equation is d theta equal to so this i am taking from the prentel meier expansion equation d theta equal to square root of m square minus 1 times in place of dv by v i will write this so that is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m square power minus 1 into dm by m okay so this is my prentel meier equation for a uh, calorically perfect gas okay so till now as i told you uh, we have just estimated that if flow is deflecting through angle d theta then how much is actually change in dm if i have to consider that i have say change in flow angle from theta 1 to theta 2 okay then how much will be the ch change in mach number so mach number limits will be from m1 to m2 okay so to do so what i will be doing i will be actually integrating this equation so i can say that if my d theta is changing from theta 1 to theta 2 during this portion whatever the change in mach number is there that is from m1 to m2 okay so then m square minus 1 One plus gamma minus one by two m square power minus one dm by m. Okay. So now what will be happening? This entire integral quantity is something which is represented by a function v of m. So v of m is known as Prentel-Meier function. integration of entire quantity i can represent as nothing but v of m and v of m is specifically called as prentel meier function so if i do take the integration of d theta it will be becoming theta so it will be becoming theta what i will be having theta with limits theta 2 and theta 1 so it will be theta 2 Minus theta one will be equal to now integral of this entire quantity. I will not uh, derive mathematically. I will just write the final expression. Okay, so if I write the final expression, it will be becoming gamma plus one divided by gamma minus one square root ten inverse square root gamma minus one by gamma plus one into 
एम स्क्वायर माइनस वन माइनस ऑफ टेन इनवर्स स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एम स्क्वायर माइनस वन ओके बट दिस इज द इंटीग्रल एंड लिमिट्स ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन आर फ्रॉम एम वन टू एम टू सो आई हैव टू पुट ओवर हियर लिमिट्स ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन ऑल्सो एम वन टू एम टू नाउ इफ यू सी वेन आई कंसिडर द सिचुएशन इनिशियली दिस इज माई ओरिजिनल सिचुएशन ओके और से हेयर दिस इज माई ओरिजिनल सिचुएशन सो आई हैड कंसिडर दैट डी थीटा इज दिस सो माई If I can say that through number of expansion waves, say this is my final theta two, then my flow angle is changing from theta one to theta two. So theta one is just parallel to horizontal direction. So I can say that for this given situation, whatever I have taken for this theta one is zero. Okay. So ultimately, my theta two is something which is the angle coming because of the sharp convex corner. Okay. So the angle. after the sharp convex corner is theta 2 so that theta 2 is becoming nothing but equal to as i told you that this integral is is nothing but a prentel meier expansion function so i can say that it will be prentel meier expansion function defined at m2 minus prentel meier expansion function defined at m1 is this one clear so usually what we do usually uh, because this is a, a long mathematical expression so usually in order to avoid calculation at every time we actually try to construct some tables for the prentel meier expansion function okay so to construct the tables what we do we first define a reference state okay so we define a reference state so we consider that when my mac number 1 is equal to 1 corresponding to this mac number 1 i will be having value of prentel meier expansion function as nothing but equal to 0 so it means when my mac number is 1 corresponding to that value of this function is 0 so now if i substitute over here that say m2 is my any mac number m so corresponding to this whatever value of expansion uh this uh, prentel meier expansion function will be vm that will be nothing but in this i have to simply substitute this m2 with m okay so that will be because when i am doing minus of m1 that is becoming completely zero so it will be gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 square root and tan inverse of gamma minus 1 by gamma plus 1 to m square minus 1 minus of tan inverse m square minus fine this is by considering the reference state that corresponding to m1 equal to 1 my v of m1 is 0 so here when i will be substituting i will be getting complete function of m2 and m2 i am considering any arbitrary mac number n is this point clear so this way what i can do i can calculate the values of v of m for different different mac numbers okay so say this is my mac number over here and this is my v of m so i can refer to any value of mac number and corresponding to this i can calculate the value but one point is whenever my mac number say my mac number is starting from 0 0.1 to 2 like that i can have many values and at some point of time i will be having mac number value as One. So when I will be having Mac number value as one, corresponding to that I will be having value as zero. Is this point clear? So now how we can utilize this expression to find out the other flow properties? That let's understand. Okay. So <clears throat> first point is that first point is that whenever <clears throat> we are having a known situation. we will be having two parameters known one is we are having the physical situation known that how much is angle theta over here for this expansion corner and second point we will be knowing is m1 okay or conditions at point 1 p1 t1 rho1 and m1 so now my aim is to find out the values at point 2 
so what i can do first thing i can do is corresponding to given value of m1 i can refer to this table and i can find out the value of v of m1 this i can find considering that m1 is known is this one clear then second point we have is <coughs> theta is known theta is known to us and just now we have derived the equation that theta is nothing but equal to v of m2 minus v of m1 so now theta is known to us v of m1 i have calculated in step 1 so from here i can calculate v of m2 i can calculate using this expression then what i can do i can go once again to the table and corresponding to this v of m2 i can check what is the mac number value actually that is satisfying this okay so whatever the value will be satisfying that will be becoming nothing but my mac number m2 okay i have got mac number m2 now how to find out other properties okay so if you do remember <clears throat> for this situation if i write energy equation what i am having h1 plus v1 square by 2 equal to h2 plus v2 square by 2 because i don't have any heat addition over here okay so ultimately i will be getting uh, for calorically perfect gas cp into t1 plus v1 square by 2 equal to cp into t2 plus v2 square by 2 so i can clearly say that because for calorically perfect gas cp is constant on both sides so i can say that stagnation temperature t not 1 is equal to t not 2 okay so for this situation t not 1 is equal to t not 2 so now i know that t not 1 is nothing but t1 times 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m1 square and t not 2 is t2 times 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m2 square okay so from here i can find out the ratio of t2 by t1 as t2 by t1 ratio will become <clears throat> 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m1 square divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 and m2 square so this is the ratio of t2 by t1 one another thing we know that another thing we know that this is nothing but an isentropic situation okay <coughs> the flow through uh parental mere expansion waves is nothing but isentropic situation for isentropic situation p of gamma t of 1 minus gamma equal to constant from here i will get that p2 by p1 will be equal to t2 by t1 times gamma by gamma minus 1 okay so ultimately i will get 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 into m1 square divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 into m2 square and whole power gamma by gamma minus 1 so from here i can calculate the value of p2 by p1 as well. okay so it means that if i have <coughs> the presence of parental mere expansion waves then using these formulations i can calculate what will be the downstream mac number and i can also calculate uh, the variation of properties okay so changes in static pressure and static temperature and stagnation pressure and stagnation temperatures are remaining constant due to the isentropic nature of the flow okay and another important point is if you have to calculate density you can write p is equal to rho rt from here you will get rho 2 by rho 1 will be equal to p2 by p1 into t1 by t2 so you can also calculate using this formulation uh, 
the value of density also okay the only thing which you have to know is your theta should be known m1 should be known okay so based on that you can calculate m2 and once m2 is known then you can calculate all other properties okay so uh, this is about uh, uh, all about parental mere expansion waves now uh, what we will do in our next lecture we will talk about the shock expansion theory okay so basically what happens uh, when we are having the real life situations okay practical situations of say flow over aerofoil at certain angle of attack there we will be finding that in some portion we are having the uh, situation like convex corner in some situation we are having the situation uh, in some portions we have the situation like concave corner okay so we will be having the combination of shock and expansion waves over there okay so when we are having this type of combined situation then how we can estimate the different aerodynamic forces drag and lift forces on our aerodynamic objects particularly considering the inviscid flow situation that we will try to see in the subsequent lecture and that particular uh, theory is known as shock expansion theory okay so i will stop at this point and uh, uh, we will have discussion now on mid semester exam